Hi, I'm Eve Krebuchet. I'm the executive director of Take This, and we are really, <laughs> we're just, we're really pleased to be partnered with Mark and to be able to, to be here today. Uh, Mark reached out to us. We were introduced uh, sometime this summer, and Mark said, I really want to do this. And I said, okay, I think we could do it. And here we are. Um, it actually is happening. You're all here. I'm very pleased. Um, one of the things that we're really excited about is that Dr. Paul Fletcher, um, who Mark was talking about, is, uh, is working with us and really was tr tried to be here. Unfortunately, uh, he has some family stuff come up and he can't, and so he very graciously recorded a brief video um, that we had the pleasure of seeing last night. I'm very excited to provide you with the opportunity to see that. And then afterwards, we will go into our first panel, which is uh, mental health representation in games, in keeping with the theme of this morning. So enjoy. <laughs> oh, right. Thank you for this reminder. <laughs> Uh, if you would like to ask questions or um, kind of start, be part of a conversation, you can use this QR code to access uh, our Discord, the TIGS Discord, um, and that will bring us all into conversation in a way that hopefully streamlines conversation and questions uh, throughout the day. So, thank you. Good afternoon and greetings from a very rainy, miserable UK. Um, my name is Paul Fletcher, I'm a psychiatrist and a professor of health neuroscientist at Cambridge University and I'm talking to you from Cambridge over video because to my regret, and I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry about this, I can't be there for, <coughs> I can't be there for personal reasons, um, but I have to say I, I am present in spirit, I have a huge amount of admiration and respect for what Mark is seeking to achieve with this initiative. And I'm delighted, too, that through my contact with him, I've been put in contact with other people who have very similar or complementary aims. And I, I really hope to participate in and contribute to future plans and ideas. Um, a little bit of background uh, information. I trained in medicine in London in the UK, and then I specialised in psychiatry. I spent a few years in uh, full-time clinical work in some very deprived areas of North London before I began a programme of clinical research ending up here in the University of Cambridge. And I now divide my time between uh, research, clinical work and uh, teaching. And I'm very pleased to say a part of my time now is also devoted to working closely with the Cambridge video game studio uh, Ninja Theory. As a doctor, um, my aim has always been to have an impact for good on the people I see, but like many doctors I know, um, I am continually doubting uh, myself in this respect. So you can imagine what it meant to me to receive this email shortly after the release of the video game Hellblade, which I'm going to say a little bit about. As you see, it came from an American woman, and in it she said, I suffer from schizophrenia, and after playing Hellblade, sending the sacrifice, I found myself in awe. It is the only piece of media that I can find that accurately represents what it sounds and feels like to have schizophrenia. I'm writing to you to thank you, because thanks to your work, I can now show people who are close to me how scary having hallucinations really is. It is something that cannot be explained, but rather felt. And perhaps even more powerfully, this um, testimony from a woman on Twitter whose son had been considering suicide, which I'll, I think speaks for itself. So what was the game that had had this apparently powerful effect on um, the people who wrote, wrote these things? Um, Hellblade was a third-person video game released by Ninja Theory in July 2017. In it, the, uh, the team sought to depict serious mental illness, and from the outset they were committed to portrayal of that illness that was honest, accurate, and respectful, but also powerful and highly original. Um, 
They enlisted a major funder of science, the Wellcome Trust, to support and develop the game, and they made contact with me in order to provide a clinician and scientist perspective. The game depicts Senua, an 8th century Pictish warrior, who, following the violent execution of her lover Dillian um, by Viking raiders, seeks to redeem his soul by journeying into Helheim and confronting the underworld goddess Hela. Crucially, Senua has this background history of being plagued by her own inner darkness, and throughout the game this darkness um, manifests as externally experienced voices and visions. These are phantasms that she has to battle with and vanquish in order to move on with her quest. The representation of her mental suffering is embedded in flashbacks she experiences, the stories that emerge from her conversation with this mysterious and possibly imaginary companion. And it's also interwoven into the game experience through the use of sometimes very profound perceptual uncertainty and, and through ever-present voices that surround her, sometimes encouraging and helpful, sometimes critical, sometimes vicious, and always intrusive and ambiguous. The experience is one of fear and confusion a lot of the time. I would very briefly like to take a step backwards and just... I mentioned my own involvement in the game. I was contacted by Dominic Matthews from Ninja Theory in 2014. And my initial reaction when he said that they were planning to make a game uh, involving a depiction of psychosis was, was uh, caution, I, I suppose you'd, you'd say. I was mindful that video games haven't always represented mental illness, mental distress with due degree of accuracy or respect. But there are a number of aspects of games that have always fascinated me, and I, I've, I've set them out here, and it struck me that um, this was, with the right attitude and the right team, potentially an enormously interesting and useful enterprise. And as a consequence, I uh, agreed to go along and, and meet them. And I was intrigued because, as I've said down here, I do think there are some very interesting and unique opportunities for representing mental illness. And it was very clear within a short space of time, speaking to Dominic Matthews and to me, Anthony Ardis and others in the Ninja Theory team, that they really were sincere in wanting to produce an on honest and accurate portrayal of mental illness in Senua. And I was delighted then to be a part of it. But what were the potential concerns? Well, it, there was an interesting literature emerging uh, from a number of sources that I've, I've listed here, talking about where video games were, were going wrong. Uh, and there's an excellent article online by Patrick Lindsay in which he referred to mental illness as gaming's favourite villain. Uh, in the scientific world, Shapiro and Rotter uh, reviewed best-selling games from 2011 to 2013 and noted 42 characters identified portraying mental illness with a majority fitting into the category, and I quote, homicidal maniac, unquote. Seth Macy also commented on something similar going on. Um, and the overarching view was that games were beginning to represent mental illness, but they were doing so in ways that were often inadequate and unfair, and sometimes downright wrong and potentially damaging. And just to focus in on Lindsay's article, he remarked that, um, as it says here, the type of portrayal that was, was being put forward in video games discourages the public from seeking further understanding and reinforces the idea that those who suffer from mental illness are broken, defective or otherwise different. Um, he also went on to say that people, the players, the public aren't being encouraged to understand and empathise with mental illness, but rather being taught by emerging pop culture simply to fear it. And Lindsay went on to outline a principle or a, an aspiration that I think has been central to the Ninja Theory approach, which was that developers need to start from the person and work outward. There is a person in there, it's not just a two-dimensional illness. And representing the person rather than defining the person by the illness could and should be an important aim of any attempt at representing mental illness. So how did the Ninja Theory team go about making this happen? 
Um, well, to begin with, they were very keen on setting up a multidisciplinary network, including, as well as them and the Wellcome Trust, uh, me as a clinician scientist, and through me, a group of individuals within uh, the CPFT, which I won't go into, which is essentially a mental health trust. Individuals who had lived experience of their own mental distress and mental illness, and who were enthusiastic about sharing that in order to make the game as good as it could be. And having got this collaborative team together, they set up what was really a co-production involving multiple interactions, iterative discussions, um, a desire to get things obsessively right while at the same time ensuring that the game would be one that people wanted to play. It wasn't just a, a documentary, it was an attempt to represent experience. And I suppose if one were to summarise the core principles uh, that emerged was accuracy was striven for um, but it was not an attempt to be everything to all people, to generalise across all mental illnesses. This was about one person's story. It was also important to be sensitive but not soft, as, as one person observed. Um, we don't want to make it Disney, we want to make it um, hard and realistic. And for me, one thing that was really key, key was that Senua had to be a person um, you know, it, it wasn't just a two-dimensional shell of, of mental illness. Um, you know, as Lindsay pointed out, you start with a person and, and work outwards. And, and critically as well, she's a hero. I think that's really important. It's so often the case that people with mental illness are portrayed as victims. She wasn't that. So here's just one example of, of how the process works. So this is a short clip of, of some of the people with lived experience and the Ninja Theory team and me um, sitting around and just discussing uh, experiences and how they might be represented. And there were a number of visual changes that come both from the textbook literature but also critically from uh, the individuals who've had uh, psychotic illness. And what would happen is they would describe them, as we're seeing here, some of the, the um, pieces of text. And then the artistic team would go away and, and try and create that within the game setting. And then return and people would say, OK, you've got that bit right, but this needs to change. And so through a process of iteration and um, repeated collaborative discussions and meetings, it became possible to... Um, produce something that everybody was, was happy with, that people would say, yes, that's what it's like for me, or that's what it's like for somebody I know. And um, w w we sensed that in doing it this way, it became possible to um, create a, a unique and unified experience that didn't necessarily represent any one person or any one type of illness but was nevertheless the sort of experience that could be realistically um, representative of what Senua or somebody like her would be going through during this time. So after, well, several years of, of working on this, I think it was initially intended to be about 18 months, turned into three years, um, all of us convened at the Ninja Theory studio uh, in spring of 2017 for a complete playthrough of the game and it was actually a nerve-wracking experience as everybody saw the finished product for the first time um, this was a mere six weeks before it was due to be released and the immediate reaction was incredible um, people felt really validated by seeing their experiences represented in this way um, there was a real sense that something important had been achieved, irrespective of whether it was a commercial success or not. Interestingly, um, to some extent, uh, there were some changes made even at this stage. Um, a couple of uh, people with lived experience felt actually that the ending was um, left something to be desired, and as a consequence, the ultimate ending of the game w was actually changed. Um, because the, the Ninja Theory team remained responsive right up to release. 
So the game was uh, released as planned in July 2017, and as some of you know, it met with quite remarkable commercial and critical success. Um, and I don't want to go into that, but I would like to mention one award that made all of us extremely proud. Uh, we were invited along to the Royal College of Psychiatrists to receive an award for communication or public engagement. Uh, the Royal College of Psychiatrists is the central body of British psychiatry. And to be able to go along with a group of people who had their own lived experience of being on the receiving end of psychiatric care and to, to um, watch as one of them gave a really moving acceptance speech for this award was, was really one of the most inspiring and, and proud moments of my entire career and really gave me an insight into the sort of impact that this sort of collaborative uh, venture could have. And this is my final slide before I, I, I leave you with a, a video clip that always moves me. Um, it was a slide prepared by Tamim Antoniades when we were invited along to the Houses of Parliament to talk to a number of politicians about how video games could be a force for good. And um, the, the, the phrase that Tamim used in this slide, making the invisible visible, is one that I think captures something very, very important about the whole thing for me. I've been a psychiatrist for a long time and I'm very mindful that mental illness and mental distress is often invisible, it's frequently silent, and as a consequence, people can feel enormously isolated and stigmatized um, when suffering from it because they feel so alone. And I think one thing that the uh, ninja theory is a representation that people can point to, can show to people, uh, can give people or can use to give people a sense of their own inner stress and suffering. And that is much more important than I could ever have realized. And I'd just like to leave you with a three or four minute video clip compiled by the uh, Ninja Theory team based upon comments that they and I received from people who played the game, people with their own experiences of mental illness. And I think it gives a real sense of just what it means to people simply to be understood and represented in a way that is uh, respectful and, and honest. And I think it also shows what a powerful hero Senua ultimately has been to a number of people. Um, so I'll leave you with this video now.
it's not what I believe, and it doesn't matter anyway. A part of your soul ties you to the next world, or maybe to the last, but I'm still not sure. But what I do know is to us the world is different, as we are to the world. I guess you would know that. Don't go, I want you to stay I'm begging you please Please don't leave here I don't want you to hate For all the hurt that you feel The world is just illusion Trying to change you Please don't go, I want you to stay Please don't go, I want you to stay I'm begging you please, please don't leave here I don't want you to hate, for all the hurt that you feel The world is just illusion, trying to change you Please don't go, 